Hello everyone, my name is Creation Robinson. I'm the owner of Big Headed Fitness LLC. And today we're gonna be talking about fresh food matters. So thank you for joining my session. So we're gonna talk about labels. We're gonna talk about the difference between natural, uh, certified organic, and just regular organic. We're also gonna talk about fuel and how to fuel your body properly. And I'm not talking just about vegan or vegetarian options. I'm talking about the full circle. So we're going to talk about when you fuel your body. Do you know how clean your food really is? And we'll talk about maybe some superfoods that you didn't know existed or maybe you want to start adding to your routine diet or meals. I come from a long family of farmers. And with that being said, I am really passionate about how things are grown, the way they taste, they smell, actually taking the time to think about what I'm going to make from scratch. And I make a lot of, I would say a good 85 to 90% of everything I consume is either coming from a natural source or I make it from scratch. Call me old fashioned but I come from a long line of women who canned and had gardens. And I have real farm family that uh, are still farming in Illinois. And so I come from that background and it means a lot to me. And I let my kids grow up in that same environment. And we had a garden in our backyard. My mom had a garden in her backyard in Virginia. My grandparents had a garden in their backyard in Pennsylvania where we grew up a lot of our time and a lot of my farm family is still farming in Illinois in a small area called uh, Farmersville. So let's get into it and we'll get talking on some of these topics. So fresh food is best for performance, hydration, and recovery and we kind of know this because it's a part of our life. We cannot sustain without food or liquid or water in our diets. It also helps with any type of disease, any type of sickness, and any type of cognitive decline or uh, anything that would come up as far as your medical. So anything that you might wanna add to your diet is gonna make a huge difference in the long term. So we're gonna talk about knowing what your fuel sources are and how to prepare them knowing what natural organic and certified organic means, preparing your fuel and knowing the basics to fueling your healthy daily life, activities or sports and key to overall health, wellness and performance. And there are some superfoods that are accessible to us all over, but we don't know they exist. And maybe you'll find out that you really enjoy them because of their variety or their flavor as well. So you'll like to eat them on just a regular basis. And it's more about the flavor than it is even about the nutritional content. So knowing your fuel sources and how to prepare them. So when you're thinking about your performance superfoods or regular foods that you know are better for you, some of the things that come to mind are in this long list. So you've got your rice and your grains, and there's so many different rice and grain options. And guys, think out of the box. If it is not processed, it's going to be better for you. But think out of the box of just your brown rice or your long rice or your wild rice. Think about sprouted rice or, yes, we all know quinoa is higher on the amino spectrum. So always add some of that in there. Some people don't like the taste or the way it feels in their mouth. So some people opt not to eat it. And I understand that, but it is a superfood. So that is one of your superfoods right there. Oatmeal. Oatmeal, you can get sprouted or regular. Make sure that when you're looking for your oatmeal, guys, go for an organic option. And the reason I say that is because there's a lot of them, and I won't say the big names, that are processed and as soon as they get cut up or milled down they lose some of that nutrient content and there's a lot of things that as soon as they go and they get any type of processing they start to lose that content of what they really have for that benefit 
of whether it be nutrients, whether it be vitamins and minerals, or just the breakdown itself when we start to digest these things. Oatmeal is also a great way to go and add in your oat milk. So guys, oat milk is very easy to make. It is literally just a cup of oatmeal or oats to two cups of water in a blender. You strain it, keep the old oatmeal scraps and use them in a, a dish or actually just eat them as is. And it becomes a great oatmeal option right there. And you can go and you can dry out the oatmeal and make actually a nice, um, a nice flour where you can go and you can bake with it or do other things with it. So there's options there, but that oat milk will be natural oat milk. It won't have all the additives, preservatives, and all of those things that they have on the shelf life oat milk that you buy at the grocery store. It's also so much cheaper. I make a batch of oat milk, almond milk, and coconut milk every week. My daughter takes uh, quick oats to work with her, so the overnight oats, she'll put them in a little container and take them to work with her, and it's a great option. And she has it as her breakfast, early lunch, before her lunch. And she packs her meals, and so does my son. Both of them are working hard individuals, so they do know what the value of eating really good food is. Um, you've got wheat, you've got buckwheat. Those are unprocessed, so really find a great source. Millet, farro, arrothe, and then even a weenie rice, which is a new type of rice that's coming out of California. Within the next couple of months, you'll probably start seeing that at some of your Whole Foods, or you might actually see it now. And, um, you know, it's an easy option to add into you know, your daily routines of making some of your favorite dishes. Beans and legumes, we can go on and on and on about some of those, but putting in that, there are some that you don't know that actually are full of great protein, and that one of those is your peas, lima beans, um, butter beans. People don't realize that, you know, they are full of not only nutrients, but they're also full of a lot of amino acid builds. So you can put that with some of your grains and you've got a nice complex right there. It'll help with recovery, it'll help with your protein count, but it'll also help with those good complex carbs, which are very important in our body. Fruit and vegetables, I could go on and on and on about that. It is uh, October, so some of the best ones to get right now are going to be anything that grows in the ground, the soil. So if you live in a certain area, look for those that are coming out of your area. And why do I say that? Because the ground content, the soil content that's in your actual area, if it is an organic or certified organic plant that has been dug up, it's gonna have certain phytochemicals that are gonna be absolutely wonderful for your body and your gut health. So get in some beets, some, um, some Brussels sprouts. You can get in you know, any of the potatoes, uh, anything that grows in with it, turn up and use the tops. Don't throw away those tops because they have just as much, if not more, to bring to the table. So your beet greens, get your beets in, juice them, you know, eat them raw. They're really great that way. Some people don't like beets and I understand that too, but it is a super food. But those greens, they're great. They have that dark green color. They have the red in there. So they have a little lycopene in there as well. And that's really good for recovery as well. Your Swiss chard, that's in season right now. Any of the squash varieties. And did you know that pumpkin seeds or squash seeds have over 22 grams of protein? Think about that for a sec. That's a lot. Peanuts are a second on that one. So peanuts are going to be about a 20-ish, and then it goes on and on. So you can get your walnuts, your almonds, your cashews, things like that. Um, 
Let's talk about a little bit of the lean meats. Lean meats, guys, think outside of the box. There are other types of lean meat besides your fish, your turkey, your chicken, or your lean beef. So guys, ostrich, there is buffalo, venison, fennet, you know, it just, there's a lot of different ways that you can go and you can cook them. But there's a lot of different varieties. And they all have things to bring to the table. And of course, if you're gonna go the beef route, um, make sure that it's from a good butcher. It's not just something that you're grabbing on the go from your local grocery store. If it's organic, it's come from somewhere in your area. If it's not organic and it just has beef or whatever, it could have been flown in from almost anywhere. But it's also been tainted with chemicals so that they can sit in that freezer or that refrigerator section longer. So you really want to be careful because once you ingest that, even if it's been cooked, it's going into your body and it can stay there for a very long time. So think about some of those things whenever you're going and you're buying some of the produce, the beans, the rice, or the nuts. So fresh or raw to consumption is key. Of course, raw, if you can take it raw and it's a vegetable or fruit, do so. And the reason is because it's in its raw content. If it's been picked within that 48 to 72 hour bracket, it's even better because it's literally come off that tree, vine, or soil area. So it's more nutrients concentrated between the skin to the root or the inner part of whatever it is that you're consuming. So apple, orange, um, any of those. This right here is just a picture. I, like I said, take everything and make it from scratch. So as much as I can do in the kitchen, I will do. I am a very busy individual, so I will tell you that I actually do teach over 36 classes a week at uh, four local gyms. I do wellness programming for a water company in our area, so I actually do do on-site classes for them as well as nutritional seminars and things like that for the uh, people who work at the water company and also the power company in our area. I also work with a couple of small entities as well. So bringing awareness of getting active and being more conscious about what you're consuming is huge on my plate with being a fitness, wellness, and uh, nutritional professional of, in the business for almost 30 years now. I work with three different colleges. I work with Kaiser, FAU, and South University in our area. And I go in and talk to the students and give them clinical hours on a lot of this stuff. So it gets them some of that background that they're gonna need in that field to work with clients or the everyday Joe who really just wants to get better health. This right here is just a picture of my northern bean soup. It had leeks in it. And I had made a chicken the night before, so I took the beans and they were actually cooked in the chicken broth that I had made the night before in my crock pot. Love my crock pot. I'm an old person when it comes to that. I know everybody's got their Instant Pots and all kinds of that. I'm one of those who likes the slow cooked process. So um, this is one of the bean soups that I actually make pretty regular. My daughter loves bean soup. So I also buy my beans locally. They are dried and they are straight out of the field at one of the farmer's markets that I go to. I have several farmer's markets. I've been blessed that I'm in an area where there are farmer's markets to go to and they are local farms. Even our honey and some of the other things that we get, soaps and some of the other stuff that we get around here are from people who have actually made it from hand. So preparing our foods from fresh or raw to table for consumption is key to the process in which we absorb, use, uh, use it for energy or recovery. And you can get your hands on certified organic, organic, it becomes even better, which means it's more nutrient dense. So when we are consuming every day affects our energy levels and how we perform. And of course, you know this, uh, if you're like me and you get into that slump in the middle of the afternoon, it can be rough. 
and I teach in the morning and sometimes in the afternoon I'm at one of the colleges and so I hit that slump and I teach in the evening. So I don't get home until an average of about nine o'clock and I am up by 4 a.m. every day to go back to the gym to teach. I start my classes at five o'clock in the morning and I'm running until I crash at 9 p.m. True story. So I actually do prep a lot of my food so that I can just come home, warm it up, but know that it's got nutritional value. So when you choose your foods for every week, whether it be just for you, your uh, thinking of what you want in yours, or the choice for you and your family. Think about the nutritional values of what you're doing. But our body will use, digest, and process what we are consuming. So if you pull something out of a box that's got over 50 different ingredients, your body is not like consuming those 50 ingredients. It is actually taking it and it is digesting it and some of it it will stay in your body. If it's a chemical, it can become one of those things that actually stays in your body. A lot of these food colors are as well uh, staying in that body and not coming out of the body and it can become a harmful thing and you can even develop allergies later on in life. So if you are what you eat, then you think about what are you consuming that makes you, you know, feel the way you feel. Are you consuming fresh? Are you consuming organic meats along with your regular uh, everyday diet? Are you consuming your grains, your rice, your legumes, your beans, fruits and vegetables? And it helps not only with the way our body absorbs the nutrients, but it also will help our, our energy levels and our recovery process. So again, you are what you eat. So chemicals versus fresh, shop wiser and feel better. We all know this is true. And everybody who's rolling their eyes right now, I gotcha, I understand. You've had a long day, you wanna sit down with your little box of Oreos and just watch Netflix. I gotcha, I understand. It's a no-no though. It's not only gonna make you feel like crap in the morning, but you get the guilt thing going on as well. And then I want you to think about the empty calories that you just took in and all the chemicals that you just took in and how your body is trying to process all that nonsense on top of these simple sugars and simple carbs and there's just no nutritional value in it. So if you eat nutrition, you will feel full longer and you will have better results with the way you feel, your energy, but also the way your skin looks, the way you age, and that's true story right there too. And we'll talk about that in a couple minutes. So this is what we need to eat every day in that bottom picture. And of course, that's where everybody kind of skims through. They might grab a box or a bag of, you know, your prepped um, lettuce or any of that to throw in a salad. I want you to think about this though. When you go and you buy that bag of salad, do you really know how long it's been there? When it was picked, do you understand where it came from? Do you care? Do you think that you should go more nutrient dense? Well, if the answer is yes, you wanna get better with the way you choose your food, think about loose and readily available in bundles that say organic. And so let's just take the lettuce or cabbage, for example. When it actually gets cut off of the part at the bottom where the roots are or it gets pulled up, there's this tiny little bit at the very end of that lettuce and it's a milky substance. So when you buy it at the grocery store and it looks kind of like there's a little chalky film at the very bottom and it says organic and you're like, oh, well, is this, you know, some type of fertilizer they're using? Actually, it's not. It is a actual substance that is created by that lettuce. It's called lettuce milk. And it's not a milk, it's actually just kind of a milky type of substance that has a white color to it. But if you flip over a cabbage or you flip over a real head of lettuce, you'll kind of see that it looks like there's this dry white substance, what you think is the stem at the very bottom, that actually was where the nutrients was coming to that head of cabbage 
or lettuce. So that actually is all nutrient based. So that is a really good thing. You could actually just consume that and get a little more of that nutrient base as well. So if you'll see the very bottom of this right here, you'll see all that brown right there. That actually is where it got picked from the root. And those, we usually cut them off, but before you go and throw it away, throw it in either a compost if you don't like to make your own broths and stuff. But if you can throw it in a quick bag, I use just the sandwich bag or a freezer bag, one of those everyday Ziploc bags that you can grab. And I put it in the freezer. And what do I do with it? If I'm short on certain things that I haven't bought, let's say it's um, some carrots or whatever, but I know that I've had some in the freezer, I just pop them into the crock pot and I make a quick broth. So I have that broth for whatever I'm making. It doesn't have to be a soup. It could actually be anything that you would use to add flavor. Even rice, when you're steaming rice, it would add a little more flavor to your rice as well. So think about that. Think about your beets, your beets. These actually have their tops cut off, but if you can go and you can get the top version with the roots, you're not only getting better because you're getting a whole plant, but you are consuming the top half of it. You're getting all the nutrients that came from the sun and the earth to get to that root right there, which is your beet, and you're getting all that nutrients that's based in the top of it. Same thing goes with carrots. Carrots are the same situation. Instead of just always going for the bagged carrots, if you can get them loose and they still have the tops, do that instead. Use the tops in your salad and then take the bottom and use it for whatever you're, you're eating or cooking and save the little nubs that are the bottom of the carrot and the top. Put them in your little baggie and stick them in your freezer. So here's one of those little situations where I was just talking about the frozen food coming back in. I have some fresh herbs. I grow a lot of stuff in my backyard. So these right here, fresh herbs. I've got some rosemary. There's some leeks in this one. There's some fennel, so the top of the fennel. Um, there is some scraps from some of the uh, peppers I had. And as you see, there's my carrots. And there's the carrot top right there. And you want to go and just put them in with some salt, pepper. And I think this one actually had some chicken bones as well. They're just kind of hiding underneath there. So just adding a bunch of different uh, awesome things that are just scraps from things that you've had are going to make a really rich broth. And it's so much tastier than anything you're going to buy at the store in a container or a can. I try not to get anything canned. This right here is just a beautiful picture of some of those great things that we get in fall. I am one of those that, unfortunately, here in Florida, for some weird, odd reason, once it hits the end of October, it becomes harder and harder to find all of these great squash options. They think that everybody just goes and only a handful of us want to eat them, so we just put them out as decoration and then it's a done deal. I try to get my hands on as many as possible. Let me pull that back for you guys. Sorry. There we go. I'm sorry, guys. Anyway, as many as possible. So when we go and we look at some of these lovely varieties of squash, you'll see all kinds of different colors, all kinds of different shapes. Every single one of them is edible. And I love squash and I love pumpkins. And like I was saying to you guys earlier, just take the seeds, throw them in the oven whenever you're doing a quick uh, bake or roast on a squash or maybe some root vegetables and bake those bad boys. Those seeds, again, 22 grams of protein and they are full of nutrients. So think about your squash a little differently when you go out to buy things um, this season. So if you're thinking October, November, December, 
all of these and most squash are good for at least a month or a month and a half depending on how fresh they are they do keep if you keep them in a cool spot they do keep so what i like to do is they're beautiful as a little bit of decoration around my house and of course my house is cool because here in florida it's the ACs rocking 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But I'm sure if you live up north, it kind of is the same way because right now it's fall. So adding those into your diet, they are nutrient rich. They are very full of robust flavor. You can add them into soups or just eat them raw like they are. They are edible raw, but you can go and you can cook them down, whether you're stewing them, whether you're adding to a soup pureeing them. Um, I make my own pumpkin pies from scratch. I make my own uh, sweet potato pies from scratch. So I actually like to roast them and I just freeze the puree. So I will go and whatever I haven't ate and it looks like they might start to go bad, I will literally just bake them out and put them as a frozen puree and pull them out in August and add them to something. So uh, think about all of that waste that you might be wasting otherwise. So I'm not promoting for sprouts. I do go to sprouts when I can't get what I really am looking for um, at our local farmer's market. So this has, of course, you see my squash and you see mini melons. One of my absolute favorite things during the summer and during the fall, they come into like two seasons, is my ugly tomatoes. They are so flavorful, but I grew up with my grandmother growing them in her garden, and we used to make fun about how ugly they were, but they were so delicious. One thing that you want to watch when you're looking for any produce at all is when you walk into a farmer's market stand or near somebody who is selling their, their goods from their farm or their garden, you can smell them. You can smell the soil. You can smell the dirt on them. You can smell what a tomato is supposed to smell like. You can smell an apple. You can smell an orange. And you, you can smell the actual smell of the plant and the fruit or the vegetable. If you walk into a grocery store and you get into the produce section and you get to a certain area, let's say it's by the apples, and you can't smell apples, there's a really, really strong chance it's not a real apple. It came from some type of um, environment where it was more of a uh, lab grown or something that was in a controlled environment or high on the fertilizer spectrum. So again, organic does make a huge difference. Um, you'll see that even my meats, uh, when I was growing up, I got very lucky in the fact that I lived in Virginia and that we had a local butcher in our area. He had a farm and every year my mother and my stepfather would buy a full cow, they would buy a pig, and they would buy several chicken. And they would have it slaughtered and they would have it prepped and they would bring it to us in butcher paper and they would have everything labeled with a Sharpie, and it was put into our freezer in our uh, back area, our back of the house area. We had a freezer in the back, so that during the winter months, we actually, we had good food to eat, and it was coming from a real, real source. As an adult, because I had so much beef, I am not a fan of beef. That is not me just saying, oh, I absolutely hate beef because it's beef. It's literally because I had so much growing up that I just disquired the taste for it. But organic fresh produce and meats and even the flowers and the cereals that you buy are going to make a difference in your overall health. So even if you make your things that are your cakes and pies or whatever and you go and you want to work on helping out that every day I buy boxed cake mixes or whatever it is that you do just to make a birthday cake. It actually takes less money and less attention if you just get what you need and have it in the cupboard for any given time. So if you get your flour 
and you get some of that natural uh, turban of sugar or natural sugar cane that's been unprocessed. Honey and maple syrup are great as options for sweeteners as well. I stay away from stevia. My daughter's allergic, but it's also, it's kind of one of those iffies. And I stay away from monk fruit and some of the other ones. I will use uh, coconut sugar a lot. It does come from the actual coconut uh, palm tree. It comes from the small seeds that are actually on the very top of a coconut tree if you find the one that's unprocessed. You can get just regular cereal now on so many different levels. And if you can swap out, I know it's hard to get somebody to not eat your Lucky Charms if they've been eating it since they were a toddler and, you know, think that, but it is not the same as it was 20 years ago either. Uh, I did actually a post on my social media talking about how different it, the boxes of a lot of these uh, things that we buy that are products on the shelves have changed even since the time that my kids were little. So your Kraft Macaroni and Cheese, it has over 15 extra ingredients now than it did in the 1970s. And the 1950s, it, the boxed cakes, they didn't have a whole lot. They had like four ingredients. And that was flour, sugar, uh, some type of uh, shortened, it was usually lard, and some type of leavening. So a baking powder and baking soda mix of some sort and that was it you literally that was the end of it there was nothing extra so think about what you're actually buying when you go and buy these franken foods all of these things in these cans these bags um, all the stuff that's readily available sometimes convenience is not convenience so we always eat and you know, uh, consume with our eyes. We pick things out because they're beautiful and green and bright and fresh. Um, the closer you buy produce in your area, the better it is for your body. And the reason is because our bodies, they absorb the chemicals in the atmosphere that we live. So if you live in Colorado, your body is going to be affected differently in a Florida area. And it's not just because it's warmer here, but the actual atmosphere, the air, the um, water that you consume, the atmosphere around you, the soil that you're walking on, all of that does hugely make a difference on some of the things that our body can and cannot adjust to. It also is how we consume certain things that we're eating. So if I live in Florida and I'm eating something from the Florida soils around here, they have the Florida chemicals. They have all of those things. If they're in a rich, certified organic soil, they're going to have those mealyworms and those grubs and all of the things that are in our atmosphere that are going to be beneficial to my body, the way it digests what I'm eating, the way it actually absorbs what I'm eating when I actually consume it in my mouth. There are so many different things that you don't think about on a daily basis when we just kind of live but there are a lot of factors that go on with some of the choices that we make and if we look at it a little differently it does make a difference so um, you know we eat and cook with our eyes first so look for bright colors freshness organic and local grown the closer it is to your area and where you live the better it's going to be for your body so here are some of the differences between your natural, organic, and certified organic. Natural food has undergone a minimal of processing, treatment, or preservatives. You could buy almost anything natural, especially in the, the meat section. They can put a little bit of lemon juice, some extra water. They can put some salt into that chicken. They could actually give that chicken some type of uh, cornmeal or whatever, but they can say that it was naturally grown. And it's with that little small label that they get away with a lot of stuff. And I'm not just talking about meats. I'm talking about even with some of these farmers, some of the things that they put onto, if that chemical that they're putting on their fields is from natural resources, they can say it's natural. 
Now, that has a huge broad spectrum. So kind of think about that while you're doing some of your shopping. And organic, it has been produced or involved in a production without the use of chemicals, fertilizers, pesticides, or artificial agents. It also means that the soil that this particular type of crop or whatever it is you're buying has been grown in soil that has had nothing touch it for over three years except for itself. So that just means that that soil has enriched itself with the carbon dioxide that we have outside, with all of the different additives that are in our environments, but it is a beautiful soil that is producing really great nutrients to whatever it's growing. And certified organic, it's been five years or more that it has had clean soil that it's been growing in or produced in. It cannot be stored or processed or handled in any type of environment where any type of chemical has been. So that means that when they go and they produced it from their field, whether it be hand-picked or whether it be picked from an actual piece of equipment, that equipment has been tested and is said that there's no fertilizer that has touched that particular piece of equipment or been handled or anything else of any type of substance that has fertilizers or any chemicals. So if you can get certified organic, they are really, really strict on saying that you have to have a clean environment for all of these things to grow. And it's a minimum of three year period prior to their planting of the new crops. And it's a uh, five period mostly through most of the areas that we are in in the United States. So these are a little bit of the data that is going on right now. And this actually is a consensus from 2020. So you'll see that our researcher found that the family farms are actually the main part of the U.S. agriculture, making up 98% of the farms that are providing 88% of what we are consuming in our areas. So that is a huge deal, guys. I want you to think about that. Small family farms. And they operate with almost half of the U.S. farmland now and generating about 21% of the population's um, what we're consuming. Think about this for a sec, guys. All of this old farmland, so whether it's been handed down from person to person through the, the family like mine has, or it has gone through different hands and some people are now trying their hand on more sustainable crops, they are seeing the difference in the quality of what they're not only producing, but how fast it is to get it on the shelves because people are looking for that better option. We are becoming much more aware of what's going on and how we're consuming things or actually how we're buying things, especially with the way that the economy is now. We want more bang for our buck, but we do not want to compromise our health, our family's health, or think about things that may be in the future because we made those choices that were a little more on the poor side. If you look on this side over here, you'll see that the small family farms, this right here is taking up a lot more of just your non-family farms, which would be more of the corporate run, or the large-scale farms, which would be more corporate run. Your mid side farms might be where a small family farm has become into a little larger farm, or maybe two families are working together side by side. And I've seen a lot of documentaries lately because I get all of those awesome things on social media. They send them to me all the time. Um, this right here... What's happening a lot in our industry now with the farms and the way things are being grown is they are banding together. So one has that small farm that is producing a huge amount of crop. And then the other small farm that is producing your livestock or your pigs or some type of... Um, 
you know, bird, whether it be turkeys or uh, ostrich or, you know, your chickens. So think about that next time you're at the store buying even your eggs, guys. This actually is a new consensus, and I am super, super happy. I get ecstatic when I read this because to me, as, like I said, farm family, to me as a descendant, um, I don't live in an area I would love to be able to have a small farm, but it's just not going to happen for me in West Palm Beach, Florida. But nearly 8.3 million acres of the U.S. Department of Agriculture has now certified organic or non-GMO land. And they are harvested in 2022 and over, over 19,000 certified organic farms. Think about that, guys. 19,000. And that consensus came in April 2023. That's our newest one. That is huge, guys. That is almost triple what we had a couple of years ago. And it's because of not only the pandemic, but it's because people are having to deal with the fact that there's a lot of things that are um, coming to light. So it is our environment, it's our climate, it's our weather, it's so many different factors. But they're trying to make a change. So saving time, money, and mental stress throughout the week about planning ahead. So guys, think about what you might want to go and you might want to add to what it is that you might want to make for your meals for those dinners. I said I do a lot of prep cooking and usually it's on a Saturday afternoon or Sunday depending on when I can get my shopping in. Like I said before, I work seven days a week so it's very hard for me to get a little extra time where I'm not busy enough to go. So I am busy like everybody else and I got you. I know that nine to five can kill you with the kids going to their athletics and their school things and, you know, the, the hubbub of everyday life between you and your partner trying to find time together as well. Kind of stick to the plan of I'm going to try to think of what I want to do, make a quick list of just maybe a couple meals I might want to make this week and make it happen. So kind of prep yourself when you're going to the store. Think about what you're going to add to your list, what you're going to do for your food. So prep your food when you get home or soon after. I do a lot of it where I'll go and if it's in a full state like this, I'll actually just put it in. I have a basket, a huge little basket that has all of my fruits and veggies in it. I go to one of the local farms in our area, uh, delivers to the one of the fresh markets, and this is their chickens. So you might find that even your eggs are different colors. Guys, that came out of a chicken. They didn't just get, oh, they're only white, and they got thrown out because they're not. Look for your organic free-range chickens, too. Um, any of the stuff that I know like this that needs to be refrigerated, sometimes I'll just put a wet paper towel over top of it, stick it in a Ziploc, and put it in my drawer in the kitchen. My, um, I'll put a wet paper towel on the bottom of all of my herbs if I've gotten them at the store and there's a little more bulk. Sometimes I can just go out and pick it from my garden and have it ready depending on what the weather's been like and how much I actually have to pick from. So a lot of these things, guys, just prep. You got to think about it. And it, think about it more than just a meal. These are your on-your-go snacks. When I'm driving from one gym to another, and I do that a lot, I may have a banana in the car or it's an apple. Um, easy on the go. Um, sometimes I'll quickly cut up an orange, throw it in a baggie, and that is actually like my pre-meal on my way home before I come home and have my dinner or my lunch. So think about those things. More fresh food even on the go. It is just as easy to cut up an orange than it is to grab a bag of chips or snack crackers. Get that stuff out of your head, guys. That's just being lazy, and it, it didn't take me any more time to just run my knife down, you know, two sections of an orange and throw it in a bag than it did, or grab an apple, just literally grab an apple, than it did to grab that bag of, you know, crap food or franken food. So, you have no excuses to make the healthier choice, and your healthier choice is going to make you be better with your habits your performance, 
your recovery, and your overall energy as well. This was one of the salads that I make usually weekly, and it does have my own vinaigrette. This right here was a salad that I bought at a local area where I'm not going to say where it is. If you can see it, that's great. If not, then that's okay too. Um, it's got over 50 ingredients, and that's supposed to be one of those quick on-the-go salads. There is over 24 grams of fat in that on-the-go salad, and there is 6 grams of saturated fat. That's the stuff that sticks to your arteries. There is only... 20 grams of protein, and there is 23 carbs, but there's also some packaged um, stale croutons and a dressing that has all kinds of actual uh, chemicals and additives. And if you look at the lettuce, you can see that there's a huge difference between the lettuce that's in this versus my salad. My salad has dandelion greens, it has beet tops, it has Swiss chard, it has purple kale, spinach, it has some carrots, it has um, some radishes, some natural radishes that I got, and I actually have the radish tops as greens as well. You can eat so many different things that you didn't know that you could eat. So again, Stop throwing away all the scraps. If you can consume them, do so. If you don't want to consume them, throw them in a bag. They can go into your, your yard, your garden. All you have to do is just throw them in there and it becomes compost. It actually is like a fertilizer for your, your natural lawn, uh, your flower beds. Uh, bananas are great for that, guys. They have a lot of nutrients that your plants just absolutely love, especially those indoor plants. So next time you're eating a banana, stick the peel right into the bottom of that house plant, and I promise a little bit of water, it'll come back to life if it's dead. So my vinaigrette that you see has lemon juice, honey, and a little tiny bit of honey. A little bit of pumpkin seed oil, not olive oil, pumpkin seed oil. It's a little tastier to my, my palate. Uh, it's got a nutty taste to it. A little bit of salt and pepper. That's it. That is it. And you just shake it up and you throw it right on the salad, toss it, put it in your, your uh, refrigerator. And this is a big container, so this will last me for about a week. So I have an awesome person across the street. One of my neighbors has a huge garden in his backyard. And he also has a huge coconut tree. And like I said, I make coconut milk every week. And if I can't get a coconut or he doesn't leave a couple coconuts on my front porch, which he's awesome about, and he does it almost every week for me. I will go to the store and I'll get come a, some of the uh, the coconut that is in its natural uh, brown form. So actually the coconut itself that is actually in the middle of it here, you can actually crack it out of there and it'll look blonde. And then over time, the oxidization is what makes it brown on the outside. The meat inside, this is actually tender meat whenever it's fresh like this. This is a natural coconut in its natural state. So it's green on the outside and I have to take a machete to it, but I get them open. But you'll see that this looks a little uh, wetter or a little less on the thicker side. And that's because it's right off of the tree. Like within a matter of an hour, I've processed this from the tree itself. This is my coconut water that came out of the middle. So I actually, I consume that right off the bat. That comes right into my mouth as soon as I get that out of there. Uh, yeah, you guys can laugh at me. It's okay. Um, but I am one of those people who I just believe that everything that you can get in its natural state is going to be better for you than to, um, you know, get something out of a box or a can or a bag. So raw and organic is full of benefits on so many levels. My raw coconuts were grown in their natural environment. There was no chemicals or fertilizers. It's literally his front yard, um, natural soil. And that tree has been there. I have lived in my house for well over 12 years now. 
and that tree has been there for probably 30 years or more and it's still producing coconuts like you wouldn't believe and there's no bs to it it's literally just natural food in its natural state and i just make it into whatever i'm cooking with it or into my coconut milk which is just taking this and putting it with some water on the stove boiling the coconut and when you finish your coconut you take the boiled coconut in the water you put it in the blender and you blend it with if you want a little cinnamon or whatever and then you strain it you keep the coconut you can make a coconut a meal out of it so you can put it in the oven and dry it to put into whatever you might want to add to your oatmeal you know whatever it is that you want to add it to or you can actually dry it and you can make a coconut flour out of it so there's so many options superfoods should be included every day so guys whether you think so or not superfoods can be as simple as getting a couple more raw you know vegetables or fruits into your diet there are certain ones that are great for you like i said your beets your watermelon your tomatoes um they all have things that you want in your diet your spinach uh sweet potatoes your squash those are all going to have nutrient dense um, varieties that you're going to want to try to add if you can. I understand that some people don't like certain things and I work with a lot of clients that don't like certain things. They'll be like, oh no, I can't. I can't do that. And I'm like, okay, well, we'll find something that you can do. So it is a behavioral change. It does take time, but adding simple habits to your daily routines will create a super highway to better performance health, hydration, recovery, and energy levels. The benefits to adding new foods to your daily routine or weekly meals and snacks will help your overall performance and st stamina. And let's get into now some of the other things that it does. If you have great food in your diet, your gut is happy, which means that your body's going to work better. Your brain is happy because it's getting the nutrients that it needs to not only work, but to work better. Your mood will be sustained a little better through the day. So you get that nutrient dense power in that gut. It makes a difference. That brain and that gut, they work hand in hand. And if one's not happy, the other one's not going to be happy. And certain things that you consume can create things that are not uh, in your body right at this point in time. So if you start eating a bunch of processed food in the next two days, let's say you have one of those where you're taking a binge and you start eating a lot of your crackers and cookies and processed foods, and then you feel like not only lethargic and crap, but your brain and your gut are trying to digest what it needs, digest what it doesn't need, and sometimes it's really rough for it to do that, but it can also cause other side effects. So it can cause inflammation, it can cause uh, a foggy brain, sometimes it can cause sinus issues or digestion issues. Yes, all of those can be stemmed from what you're actually consuming. So, superfood benefits are endless. Benefits of consuming superfoods are endless because of some of these key points. They are a higher in vo volume of your vitamin, your mineral, your fiber, your antioxidants. They help to ward off disease or keep you healthier. If you actually do have a disease, it will help to mitigate the progression of the disease. Promote heart health and regulate your blood pressure. One of the best things for that right now that I was talking about two or three times, beets. It helps with your blood pressure. It actually does. Even if you can get it into a beet form of just a powder that you throw into some water or some fruit juice or your smoothie every couple of days, it will make a difference. Um, your weight control and cravings. You won't crave as much sugar or salt or um, things that you thought you needed in your life. It is a slow go, so take it slow and steady, but it does happen. So break some of those habits. 
improve your energy level and moods. And of course, we were just talking about that, the energy level and the mood, they kind of go hand in hand and reduces the effect of aging and a way our body regenerates itself and repairs cells. So whether you think so or not, if you eat a lot of really fresh food, have you seen somebody you know, maybe it's your mom, maybe it's a friend, and you notice one who eats a lot of crap, they kind of don't always look the best. And then you eat, you have one who's health conscious, but, and they go to the gym or whatever, and they don't have to be like crazy health conscious, but you notice that they eat better than the average individual. And you notice that they have a little more energy than the average individual. Look at their aging process. How old are they? What do they look like? If they kind of go off and on, and even alcohol will play a downer. So guys, a little, little bit of alcohol goes a very long way. So if you like your alcohol, red wine is small little doses, you know, and that dark chocolate. Not everybody is going to consume dark chocolate and be like, oh yeah, it's great for my health. Well, the whole bag isn't. And you have to have that 80 or 90% dark cocoa for it to make a difference. Most people don't like the bitter taste, so they want something with more fat and calories and sugar in order to consume it. So that kind of, eh, it's a thin line. I don't buy into a bunch of the, the diets or any of that. I believe that real food is how you uh, get the best out of what you're looking for. So again, kind of look at how they're regenerating. Um, are they repelling cells? Are they looking like they're younger every day? Uh, does their skin and their nails and their hair look healthy? Those are big key items right there. You can actually kind of know what, it, as me as a professional, I can kind of seek it out really quickly. And that's just because of my background and my 30 years of learning from some of the best in the biz and working with people every day. You know, um, you, you look at these people and it's not always their body types. That's kind of a misconception as well. Look at the way they are. Are they fragile? Are they uh, moving good? Are they healthy looking? Does their skin look healthy? Does it look like their nails look healthy? Are their nails dry and brittle? Um, do their teeth and, you know, some of their facial features, do they look like they have um, not gone, undergone a bunch of what I call Franken food or crap food and, um, alcohol and drying agents, which is a lot of salt in their diet. Uh, if I, if I, uh, the, the decline of our memory and our cognitive, as well as our brain functions as we get older, that's a big must too. I, my daughter is a child psychologist. She actually works with children on the spectrum and that is everything from autism to learning disabilities to some of the other things and one of the huge things that has not only been told by doctors but even her as a psychologist when she's working one-on-one -on -one with a lot of these younger kids is that the nutrition is a huge part so when they have their lunch and they're sitting with her in the session uh, she, you know, lets me know that they're making better choices because mom and dad have been told, stay away from the sugar, stay away from the salt, stay away from all the snack crackers and all the little things. And um, she said that, you know, she's seen some changes working with them with some of the ones that have had their diet changed. So it does make a big difference on what you do and what you consume. So this is a picture of my family farm. This is the farm that I was talking about earlier today and actually is still in working operation. And this was in the 50s when this was actually taken, this particular picture, but it actually was built by my grandfather by his own hands. He was one of five brothers and his brothers helped him build all that you see here. So you had their, their own personal um, garden here had a lot of crop. All of this crop back here was their fields. They had all of the extra, which was the grain extruder and the hail base that would be done here. 
They had the two barns. This held a lot of equipment, but also this one right here was a milking barn. They had pigs and they had cattle and they had goats and they had a lot of different uh, types of animals on top of having that crop and everything was used. Nothing went to waste. When there was lard and there was skins, they used them. They used them to make uh, whatever it was, soap, water. The lard was used not only in cooking, but it was used to help preserve. And, you know, everything that they grew on their trees and in their, their crops, it all came to the table or it was put away for uh, use later. I will say that there is a silo that is here right now that holds grain. And that was an after um, whenever they were producing a lot of uh, wheat and a lot of uh, corn later in the 80s. So there, there is a silo that's there now. But I'm just letting everybody know that I come from that family that does work from sun uh, up to sundown and they work long and they work hard and we are not a huge family it is not a huge operation but it is an operation and it is providing for small families whenever you do consume things that are organic or are coming from those type of farms so when you go and you do your shopping from here um, and you know the next eon Think about the families that you're, you're helping with. Um, think about the future, future of what they're bringing their kids up and what our future is going to hold for us as we get older. Because those children, whether you think so or not, they are our future. And they are going to make some of those um, technology booms and some of them different uh, ways for us to be able to sustainably live in the future and it's going to make a difference but it's also going to make a difference for how long we're around personally to not only live better but when we're about around longer they're going to be around to see us and be able to help us um, become older individuals at a slower rate than some of the um, generations before us. So I'm going to close with that. I will give you all of my information. This is my contact information. A lot of you guys on my YouTube is already going to have this. If you want to start following me, I am absolutely wonderfully excited about that. My name is Creation Robinson. I have two different emails, fitnessbaker77 at gmail or bigheadedfitness, which is my business at gmail. You can follow me on Instagram or Facebook at Rena Justy or it'll be Creation Robinson Rena Justy if you're following me on uh, Facebook. And thank you for attending my session and hopefully we'll have more sessions to be available on YouTube. I also do have many awesome workouts where it's just me rocking it out, but I promise you will get a sweat in and you will work out to your ability with whatever it is you have hanging around the house. So until next time, and until I meet again with all of my participants that are listening in on this session, I will talk to everyone later and hopefully see you guys out and about in the future. All right, guys, signing out. Have a great one.